right, let's see if this works. Oh my gosh, okay, finally. Here we go. Ah, sorry about that, trusty sidekick. I'm right here. Um, can you hear me now? If so, say yes. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I'm going to keep asking until someone say, says yes. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Someone say yes, so I can stop. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Hey, Lady Celtic Moon, hello. Good seeing you. Yes, Lady Celtic Moon confirms that you can hear me. Awesome, fantastic. Sorry about that, guys. I don't know what went wrong. It was really weird. Um, I thought that uh, Chester's, Chester's little mishap in Japan had filtered its way over here. So, this is a continuation, kind of, sort of, of uh, the earlier live stream from about eh, 15, 20 minutes ago for Drawn and Quarter Fan Edition, where we all drew um, Manny's new character, Skunk Girl. Um, uh, in case you aren't aware, Drawn and Quartered Fan Edition is a, a weekly competition where a bunch of artists, fan artists, get together and they draw, um, they all draw a particular, um, character or subject, um, within a two-hour period from start to finish. And then the viewers of the live stream get to vote and, and decide which is the best art, who did the best job, so on and so forth. Um, today, the subject was Skunk Girl, um, a new independent comic put together by uh, Manny, uh, I wish I can remember his last name, Corolia? I'm trying to remember how to pronounce it. But, um, so uh, Manny's uh, comic just uh, started um, this past week, I believe it was this past Tuesday, and um, so we all came together to draw her, and... Uh, I didn't win, but it was fun, and I'm going to finish it right now. So, thank you very much for uh, for showing up to watch me finish it, and uh, hopefully you guys won't get too bored, and you guys will have fun and enjoy it. If you guys have any questions, let me know. Ask me questions. Uh, let's see. Korea. KG says Korea. Um, yes, Lady Celtic Moon, could you get the link for Manny's... Uh, Manny's um, um, Skunk Girl campaign and uh, post it in the chat. Um, I would greatly appreciate it um, because I want everyone to be able to uh, to check out Skunk Girl and uh, purchase it if they can. And uh, yeah, we need we need to get the word out about Manny and about his work. So um, yeah, everyone, if you haven't if you haven't bought Skunk Girl yet, please do. Um, actually, I think Lady Celtic Moon was the very first person to order it. So, she's a big Skunk Girl fan. As am I. She's a really cool looking character. And, and, she, and she's very much, Skunk Girl is very much in the vein of the, uh, of the sort of classic bad girl characters from the 1990s in comics. Um, you know, she, she's, a, she's, a, she's, she's a criminal, but she's sort of like a, a fun-loving criminal. Um, I guess you can call her an anti-hero. Anti-heroine, in a sense. Um... So, um, Skunk Girl, sort of, the character sort of harkens back to that sort of, uh, character from about 20 years ago in, in comics. So, um, let me get out of there. Oh, here we go. Show. There we go. It's in the tap. It's in the, ah, my mouth is dying. It's in the chat. Lady Celtic Moon just, uh, placed it in Korea. Thank you very much, KG. So it's Manny Korea. That is his name. Um, and Lady Celtic Moon just kindly placed the link to Manny's Indiegogo campaign in, in the chat. So anyone interested in Skunk Girl, please uh, please check it out and order it. Um, ah, yes. And Lady Celtic Moon also emphasizes that if you're here watching... Um, Please uh, like and share this live stream um, and uh, get the word out that I'm drawing. Actually, I should probably do that myself. Um, hold on one second. I'll do that. So. And also, I'll put some music on so you guys don't get totally bored listening to me talk.
Okay. I've, uh, let's see. Hold on. Ah. Uh, <laughs> Lady Kauta Moose starts dancing to the music. Um. Ah, Lady Kauta Moose bragging about her, uh, good sexy voice. Hmm. Yes, the mind boggles. The imagination starts running wild. Let's see. KG, the mighty wrench, says trusty sidekick. Ah, we lost one, says Celtic, late Celtic Moon. Um, trusty sidekick has said he shared the link. Thank you very much, uh, trusty sidekick. I really appreciate it. And, and trusty sidekick, your art is really, really good. It's fantastic. Um, they were t bragging about it and showing it during the, uh, during Drawn and Quarter, so, um, very impressed. Um, Shinobi Raccoon says he's subbed. Awesome, thank you very much. Hey everyone, if you haven't subbed to me already, please do, I'd really appreciate it. Um, I do live streams about, about once every few days, sometimes more often, sometimes a few times a day. It just depends. Um, but, um, yeah, uh, please sub to me, like this video, give it a thumbs up, and hit the bell for notifications of future videos, um, because um, I never know when I'm going to be doing them, I'm not sure what time I'm going to be doing them, half of my um, half of my live streams are like in the middle of the night, like right now, at least on the East Coast, um, sometimes they're early in the morning, like 4am, sometimes they're in the afternoon, I never know, so <laughs> you'll never know, so hit the bell for notifications, that way it, it will let you know when... I go online and uh, with my erratic sort of YouTube schedule, and um, you guys will know, get a heads up, and you'll be able to watch me live stream or when I just post videos in general. I do uh, speed drawings, um, I do unboxings, stuff like that of comics I get in the mail. So um, yeah, please sub, like the video, um, and uh, hit the bell for notifications. Okay, cool. Ha um, <laughs> Joshua Hughes says, I think Lady Kelton Moon should join a stream and let us hear her voice. Yeah, I agree. Um, unfortunately, she can't join this one because I'm uh, filming through my camera. Sorry, my camera, obviously. Through my phone camera, and it won't allow me to use Hangouts on it in terms of uh, multiple people being on it. So, um, unfortunately, this stream will not be the stream where we get to hear uh, Lady Celtic Moon's sexy voice. Um, but hopefully soon. Um, Trusty Sidekick says, uh, thanks Jason, I'm grateful and humbled by Manny's praise. Well, it's, it's, it's well-earned praise, because your, your artwork is really, really good. I mean, I've, I've seen it from a number of sources and, and a number of places, and you're, you're a great artist, so, yeah, I hope to see more of it in the future. Um, let's see, um, bum, 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 bum. Ah, Shelby Raccoon agrees with Joshua Hughes about hearing Lady Celtic Moon's voice. So, yeah, so now now we're all wondering what her voice sounds like. Um, <laughs> Lady Celtic Moon confirms it is very sexy. Um, but let me get working on this, uh, finished on this uh, skunk girl that I started earlier. Um, really fun character. I've never drawn her before, but um, now I've been watching um, Manny, um, you know, talking about her and sort of revving up anticipation for um, the, the, the sort of release of his comic book, or at least the campaign for his comic book. And so, um, yeah, I've had several months to sort of, you know, I look her over and stuff, and uh, yeah, just really, I, I like, I like the whole, throwback type bad girl character um, I guess nowadays I, I, I probably mainly because of all the uh, a lot of the sort of political correctness that that has made these characters sort of um, verboten in uh, in pop culture whereas in the 90s they were they were really big and uh, they're all over the place nowadays you know they're concerned about the male gaze and toxic masculinity and so on and so forth. So seeing a character who is unashamed of uh, not only how she looks, but uh, uses her looks to her advantage is uh, is kind of kind of appealing in a in a sense, in a, in a sort of a in a um, 
refusal to to bend the knee to uh, that sort of uh, neo uh, uh, puritanism in in pop culture. So um, yeah, so you know, good for you, Manny. Good for uh, good for comic book readers and good for Skunk Girl in general, I think. So um, yeah, I'm gonna finish this drawing and continue the fun. Oh, <laughs> trustee, I was talking about your drawing, not my voice. <laughs> yes, all hail trusty sidekick's um, artwork, because he's a really good artist. Um, yeah, if you have not subbed to trusty sidekick, please do. I, um, I'm not sure if he has, I'm not sure what type of content he has, but I think uh, it's always good to... to sub to a to a great artist and trusty sidekick is definitely a great artist so if you haven't already go go sub to trusty go sub to trusty yeah i've been talking too long today my, my tongue is starting to gum up um shinobi raccoon agrees trusty is awesome <laughs> ah lady celtic moon says i'll be as sexy sexy as i want they can bend the knee to me <laughs> The decal the moon says, you have to hear me, trusty? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll be right back. I have to get some water. Let's see. Wow, 11 people are here. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much, everyone, for showing up. If you haven't already, please sub to my channel. Please uh, give this video a thumbs up and uh, hit the bell for notifications of future videos when I live stream or post videos. Um, let me see. Find all my pens. All right, found my last pen. That's good. Yeah, and everyone, please, uh, please share this video out to uh, Twitter, Facebook, so on and so forth, so uh, people can uh, see that I'm I'm drawing right now. I forget to do it myself half the time, but it's always good when other people do it as well. So the more people who uh, who share it, the more people who can uh, see me draw, and you know, hopefully, I'll get more input on on what you guys like and what you guys you know want to see in terms of uh, my artwork. So, if you guys have anything you would like to see me draw, let me know in the chat. Share. Share your thoughts on what you would like to see me draw. Recently, I've been drink, drawing some chibis for, uh, for Pope Fire. Um, but, um, yeah. But, I, you know, I do commissions for mostly, um, well, combo characters. Um, but, you know, I do everything from monsters to, uh, yeah, you know, any, any fictional character, and I do. If you see, if you've seen any of my uh, sort of sketch a day drawings, I do a lot of uh, portraits, like pencil drawings of uh, of famous people. Um, I do those mainly to uh, keep in trim, keep keep my uh, realism muscles um, sort of in shape. Because I, I find if I don't draw from life or from pictures of real people. Um, on a regular basis, then my uh, my ability to uh, to draw realistically starts to starts to suffer. So, 
Um, let's see. Ethereal Dragon's here. He says, yo. Hey, Celtic Moon says, I'm trying to sub to everyone's channel who's here. Oh, cool. That's nice. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> Ethereal Dragon says, Rice Krispies treats. What is that? Is that from Poke Wire? Um, she's been on a Rice Krispies treat kick lately. Um, Shinobi, um, Raccoon says, so you have any original characters? I do not have any original characters, um, Shinobi Raccoon. Um, if I did, I would probably be doing comic books with them. But since I don't, um, I don't have a comic book or anything like that. As of yet. But, um, you know, I've always, uh, like everyone else, you know, I've always, I, most of my characters have been sort of knockoffs of, uh, you know, sort of popular superheroes and the like. So I have, so I haven't even tried to make an original character in years. Um, I, I, you know, I just sort of got tired of my own lack of originality when I was a kid, and I just sort of stopped doing it. So I would have to, I would have to put some thought into um, creating a character because it would have to be original enough that it wouldn't it wouldn't immediately annoy me with how derivative it is so I'd have to I'd have, I'd have to give it some thought um let's see <laughs> Scott Schmier says, I have a dog humping my leg on my channel. Okay. That's, that's I guess that's, that, that's content, I suppose. Um, <laughs> Ethereal Dragon confirms that the, uh, that the Rice Krispies treat, um, reference was indeed from Pope Fire. Um, do you have page samples, Bullet says. Yes, I do. If you, um, I'm trying to think of where you can see my page samples. Um... Huh. If you go to my um, Facebook page, and my Facebook page is facebook.com slash illustration by design, like this channel name, um, and you go, in the, go into the photo section, if you dig back far enough, you can probably find some page samples of mine um, for comic books. Um, trying to think where else you can find them. You can go to my website, Illustration by Design. It's um, illustration-by-design.com. Um, but if, go to um, go to the About section of this YouTube channel, and all my contact info is in there, including my website, my Facebook page, and uh, everything else. So you want to find any of, any of my artwork, go to my About section in my YouTube channel, this channel. Click the links, and that will take you to samples of my art. You'll be able to see it there, okay? Uh, <laughs> Scott Schmier says he's my dog, so it's not nasty. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's still it's, it's still kind of nasty, but he is your dog, so it's not. It's, you, you probably won't get arrested for it. Um, <laughs> it was showing affection for the new kitten we had gotten. Well, be better humped you than the new kitten, Scott Schmier. So, I'm glad. I'm glad you guys got a new pet. <laughs> what kind of dog do you have? I want a dog, definitely. Um, but uh, so far, not yet. Not yet. One day. Uh, Ethereal Dragon says you can always co-create with somebody if you want to do a comic, but not Point Man. 
We're going to do one in a few months. Okay, cool. Oh, a dachshund mix. Okay, cool. So, so it's a small dog. That's nice. Um, yeah, I know. Yeah, I, I mean, I... Yeah, co-creating with someone else is, is a good idea. Um, I need to... Um, I think another part of it is that I, I, I don't know if I am ready to work on a, on a book yet. Um, that's a lot of work. A lot of work. And the last year with uh, all the stuff going on with Comicsgate and Indiegogo accounts and everything have just uh, sort of reinforced that in my mind that I should not be starting a comic book campaign until I know that I can f complete the artwork in a timely manner for the backers of that campaign. Um, I think that's essential that, that stuff gets done and that people aren't kept waiting. So I am going to hold off until I, I'm fairly confident that, I, that, I, that I'll be able to get that work done. So, but you know, like I said, uh, if, if a good idea comes along, and I am ready. I'm more than happy to do it. So stay tuned. But until then, I am more than happy to take commissions like this. This isn't a commission, but drawings like this. Um, so if you, and you guys want me to do a drawing for you, just let me know. Again, contact me. Contact me through uh, you know the about section of my YouTube channel, and uh, you know, just uh, let me know, and I'll send you prices and all that fun stuff. Um, Ethereal Dragon says, like Jacob's Sebesta taking forever. I, I'm not, well, I know who Jacob is, but I, I don't know what you're talking about him taking forever with. So, does he have a comic book out? Ah, uh, Theodore Dragon says he's right. He's drawing one. Point Man is writing it. Okay, cool. Well, I'm sure it'll come out. You know, um, eventually. So, um, you know, a lot, a lot, a lot of. I mean, it doesn't matter if you're a pro or or a um, or a, you know, sort of a new newbie in, in comics. I mean, both have uh, have to f make sure they they get their art out on, in a timely manner because you know you have you have major books like. Uh, what was it called? Uh, uh, my brain is dying here. Well, it's early in the morning, so. Um, Doomsday Clock. Um, drawn by Gary Frank. A great artist. Fan phenomenal artist. But it is chronically late. And, and I can see why. I mean, the art is really detailed in it. Extremely detailed. Um, but at the same time, the people waiting for the book get frustrated. And while there are more than... They're more than willing to buy the book once it comes out. It's um, it doesn't. It's it, it can be discouraging, and it's even worse if you if you're if you're not, if your book isn't from a big publisher, um, and if it's being crowdfunded. If someone if someone has bought your book ahead of time through crowdfunding, and you're and you're late, and late not just by say a month or three months, but by a year or more, that's not good. 
and um, it it will kill any future sales you have of uh, of future comic books that you put out because people won't be able to, to trust that you can deliver on time. So for your own good, for the artist's own good and the writer, um, it's it's imperative that they get their books out, you know, fairly fairly close to when it was scheduled. Um, I mean, you have books like Red Rooster um, by the Brightwisers. It's it's a little late, but it doesn't for me. I I bought the book. Um, I'm not that concerned because one one the pros, but also. Um, they, they told everyone ahead of time that, that it wouldn't be coming out until spring. And now it's early summer. Well, I guess it's midsummer now. Um, so it's, it's, it's eh, a few months late, a couple months late. But I, I, you know, I'm, I know that's going to be really good. Um, they have a history of producing great work and uh, being reliable. So you just have to sort of uh, you know, look at who, who, who it is that um, you're, you're sort of waiting on. With these with these projects, and again, if you're if you're a relatively un, unknown artist, it's even more important that you put stuff out on time, because people don't really know you, and um, how you present or deliver on your project will tell them a lot about you and how much they can depend on you in the future. So you want to make a great first impression, and if you're going to put out a book, put it out on time, and give them more than they were expecting. So, um, Evan Von Scrabble says, I don't have fans. I think you have a lot of fans in the fan community. So, there's that, Evan. Uh, <laughs> um, let's see. Um, let's see, Shinobi Records says, but Rich has been keeping people updated on what's, what's going on so I can get his lateness. Yeah. No, that's another thing. I mean, if you if you update people on a regular basis and let them know what's going on, they'll be less likely to be upset with you. So, if you are going to be late, just make sure that you let the people who who took the time and money to back you, let them you know take the time to let them know that you know their their investment in time and money has not been wasted, and uh, that they you know you can be counted on. So, um. Let's see. Um, oh, okay. Mm. Shinobi Raccoon says, Talking with Manny has helped me get ideas for my character, Cherry Blossom. Um, well, you may want to be careful, Shinobi Raccoon, because Cherry Blossom is already n the name of a character of, a, um, of an Archie Comics um, character. So, you might want to just be careful with uh, with that. Um, she's one of Archie's girlfriends in Archie Comics. Um, Lady Celtic Moon says, "EVS, you do art." And Evan Von Scriber says, "I do awesome." <laughs> um, Bill says, "Well, why is it okay for Mitch to be late and Ethan not?" It's okay. It's, it's okay for Ethan to be late as well, as long as again, as long as they, um, you know, keep the keep the customer informed on what's going on. Um, and Ethan has, has been very upfront about what he does in terms of the art. I mean, he, he, he's been showing people the art as it's being drawn, as it's being colored, you know, and over the weeks and months um, that um, people have been waiting for uh, Cyber Frog. So, you know, again, I'm not concerned about Ethan delivering on, on the book. Um, it's just, uh, it's when creators don't let their backers know what's going on, and there's sort of radio silence for months on end. Um, and it's like they dropped off the face of the earth, and, and they don't have a YouTube channel where they're, where they're uh, sort of communicating with fans on a regular basis. That's when it's, it starts to, uh, it, 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 it is troublesome and um, um, to um, to be late on books. You have to keep you have to keep the customers informed on what's going on. You can't just uh, can't just disappear and uh, and be incommunicado with uh, with the people who are you know essentially your boss. So.
<laughs> Ethereal Dragon says, just wait for the 10th variant cover of Cyber Frog. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he is, uh, he is milking that first issue for all it's worth, which is, um, which is good in, in a business sense. Um, but he, well, ultimately he needs to deliver the book. So, um, and again, I, I'm not, I'm not really concerned about, about that. It's just a question of when, we're, when we're going to be getting it. Sorry, I am just trying to f figure out the best angle at which to draw her hair. Hmm. Um, Shinobi Raccoon says, I'm not either, but Ethan's backers are getting pissed. Um, yeah, I, mm, I think that might be for a number of reasons. Um, some of which are because, is because the books lay, some of them aren't happy with some of Ethan's, uh, some of Ethan's behavior, um, over the past, you know, year or so. Um, so I think a lot, a lot of it may be sort of combining to make them upset about it. Again, if the the sooner you can deliver your your book um, on time and as promised, if not you know delivering more than you promised, um, the more satisfied your customers will be, and the more forgiving they'll be with a lot of any other sort of drama or, or stuff that uh, might be occurring. Um, it's it's but it's hard. When uh, it's harder for fans to sort of uh, to maintain their support when the, when one the book's late and two there's other stuff going on that's upsetting them as well. Um, it's going to make them less forgiving when it comes to the book they initially supported you on in the first place. So you know, get your book out. Do the number one job that is your job to do. Draw. And write your comic and get it out to the customers on time, and the rest of it will will sort itself out, or at least it'll be easier to deal with. <laughs> it'll be easier for the customers to deal with as well. They're, they're, they'll, they'll be more forgiving if, if you if you give them what they what they came to you for in the first place. I guess that's what I'm saying. Oh, uh, let's see. Um, Eagle forty three says, "What is the what is the cyber frog lore anyway? The lore of cyber frog? Are you talking about the the what the character's about? Is that what you're asking, Eagle Eagle forty three? He's he's sort of like an an alien savior of mankind. He is half frog, half alien technology um, that has been uh, created by." A living spaceship to save humanity from evil space wasps. I guess that's the uh, that's the uh, Cliff Notes version of it, of the lore. Um, and Ethereal Dragon is, is is saying likewise. Alien wasps take over Earth, turning human blood to honey. Yes, and then bullets well, continuing <laughs> the uh, the synopsis. So, ah, uh, what am I? Let's see. I know what I'm doing, but I'm trying to figure out. I need to color in her hair. At least that one, the main stripe of hair. Ah, I know.
Then Von Schreiber says, wait, this sounds like Beast Wars. <laughs> it is Beast Wars. Beast Wars 2019. <laughs> Was there no toads around? <laughs> There's a toad-free swamp, I'm afraid, Evan. I mean, uh, Eagle 43. No toads. Only frogs. Ah, uh, Shinobi uh, Raccoon says, going to bed now. Nice talking with you. Yeah, same here with Shinobi Raccoon. Thank you very much for, for subbing to me. I appreciate it greatly. Um, and everyone else, if this is your first time here, if you haven't, if you haven't subbed to me already, please subscribe to my channel um, and uh, give this video a thumbs up. I do uh, live streams a few times a week, if not more, and uh, I think you'll, you'll enjoy the content. If you like superheroes, if you like uh, you know, sort of you know, cartoon illustrations, that's what I do, so. Says, so there's no connection to Frogger. <laughs> I don't think so. He could have been a could have been one of his predecessors, maybe, maybe a cousin, an uncle. Um, Ethereal Dragon says there is a Salamander as his brother. Yes, yes, the Salamandroid is uh, Cyber Frog's brother, who has also been transformed into a cybernetic warrior by that alien spaceship. So there, there, there are at least two of them. Um, Charlie McNeilson uh, says Cyberfrog is all about Rex Power Cult. <laughs> is that your character, Charlie? I'm not familiar with the uh, Rex Power Cult. Uh, Felix Haas says that is a beautiful skunk girl. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Yeah, I was I was inspired by the character because uh, I was uh, I don't know I, I I think I I guess I just like Manny's idea for her. I like the idea of skunk girl so. I wanted to make her. I wanted to make her look cool and good and uh, bad. <laughs> um, Evan Von Scriber says I like turtles. Uh, Vielnet says best skunk girl of the night. Oh, thank you very much, Vielnet. I appreciate it. She didn't win, but um, well, she won initially, and then the stream died, and uh, and then they started up the stream again on on another channel, and uh, and I got outvoted at the end. So, but. I almost won. I got. I was. I was this close. This close to winning. Um, let's see. Um, Lady Celtic Moon is again encouraging people to please like and share this live stream. Thank you very much, uh, Lady Celtic Moon. I, I. I am like. I am this close. This close to making Lady Celtic Moon a moderator. Bam! And I just did it. Because she's been extremely helpful to me. So thank you very much, Lady Celtic Moon. I appreciate it. Um, let's see. Um, Joshua Hughes says, Rick's was only slightly better. I didn't, I didn't get, actually get the chance to see, to see uh, Rick's Cross Comics artwork. Because I was, I was so focused on trying to finish my drawing. And I still didn't. But, you know, if, if I... I, I'm easily distracted, so I, I, I try not to look at other, other people's artwork while I'm, while I'm on Drawn and Quarter, because there's only so much time. Um, uh, Junkyard Dunn said, this was the best in show tonight. Oh, <laughs> thanks, Junkyard Dunn. Um, Charlie McNeil says, says, no, that's Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon. Oh, the, um, the Rex Power Cult you were talking about earlier. Okay. Got it, got it. Um, Ethereal Dragon says, boo, recount. 
<laughs> Everybody subscriber says, who won? Uh, Cross Comics won um, tonight on uh, the fan edition. Uh, Evan Von Scriber. Um, and, uh, Eagle 43 is, what is that? Is that a turtle he put? I can't see. It's hard for me to see. Um, Bielned, um, says, oh, I was watching two streams at once. So when it died, presumed I'd miss the announcements of the, of the winners. Um, yeah. Yep, uh, Eagle 43, Rick versus the pros. It will be an interesting night next Wednesday. I'll be there working the polls, so. <laughs> it's going to be interesting. Hail Rick, glad he won. I felt guilty when I voted for you. Why, why would you feel guilty voting for me? Vote for the best, per vote for the best art. Um, and that's what I do. I don't. I don't let personal loyalties sort of get in the way when I vote. If, because uh, there are a lot of people that I like, but if someone does better art than them, I'll vote for them next week. I mean, I'll vote for that person I like next week if their art's good enough. I, I, every every time I vote for the best artist on uh, on uh, yeah, drawn a quarter, whether it's the fan edition or the pro edition. Best art wins. That's what it's for. It's not. It's not a popularity contest. At least for me, anyway. So. Uh, what the heck? Um, Lady Celtic Moon says, "I want to stream, but I have no idea what I would do. There is something I want to do, but it's hard to explain." Rick is dog meat, or Mike well cancel. I don't understand what that means. Um. Oh, 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 you're talking about next week. Rick is dog. <laughs> you're talking about the, at the pro edition, Rick is dog me or Mike will cancel it. Oh, boy. Okay. Well, it'll be interesting nonetheless. We'll see. We will see. I'll, I, I will be tuned in to watch. Um, let's see. Uh... <laughs> Evan Boscar says, Let, say, it, say it, Lady Celtic Moon. Um, Bullet says, work in them polls. Um, Eagle 43 said, I voted for you, Jimmy. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I voted for me, too. Um, <laughs> I, I always try to vote for me because one time I voted for someone else in the fan edition, and I got zero votes, and I felt dumb for not voting for me. So my, my rule after that has always been, if nothing else, vote for myself because even if I come in last place at least there's one person who backed me even if it's just me so I feel, I, I feel less bad that way um <laughs> bullet says merit you say what voting for merit that's that's ridiculous what are you talking about that's 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 heresy that's that's redonkulous um Scott Schmier says I won't say who I voted for I had three people I knew on the panel that's okay, Scott. I won't, I won't tell anyone that you voted for me. Don't worry. Um, that's crazy talk. Yes, crazy talk indeed. Um, Felix Haas says, uh, you're probably the best artist. It just depends on, on what week it is. Sometimes I'm, I'm the best artist. Sometimes I'm the worst artist. Um, because there are some really, really good people on both the fan edition and especially on the pro edition. who um, you know, I see their work. I'm blown away by it. Um, who was there's this one guy who was on the fan edition I can't remember what it was um, what, what what did he draw I think it was like an anime week and he did this character and it was so cool um, it was really explosive just really energetic and I was like wow that guy I, did I vote for him that week no I think I still voted for myself but um, if I was being honest I would have voted for him because his work was Amazing. I can't remember his name, but he, he was a great artist. Well deserved win. Um, 
let's see. Um. Ah, uh, let's see. Ah, uh, boy. Eagle Forty Six says, "Vote Rick." <laughs> Hashtag Remember the Booster. We will, not, we will not stand for second place this time. Lady Celtic Moon says yes. Uh, Ethereal Dragon says, "I voted for you too." Thank you very much, Ethereal Dragon. I really appreciate it. Seriously. Um, Mike is going to yell at Chester again. Um, says Joshua Hughes. Um, Evan Von Scriber says, Mike yelled at Chester. Um, yeah, he, he, uh, a little while back, um, because, okay, this is something you should not do for Drawn and Quartered, um, Pro Edition especially. Don't gag vote. When I say gag vote, I, I don't mean like gagging like you're gagging on a piece of meat or something. I mean, don't, don't vote for someone as a gag, um, especially if it's the, the, the fan winner. Don't sort of gang up and mass vote the fan winner just because you want to see the fan winner beat the pros. Unless that fan winner is actually deserves to win. If you think he deserves to win, vote for him, yes. But don't don't vote for them simply as a joke um, against the pros because Mike Miller, the guy who runs Drawn and Quarter Pro Edition, he does has no patience for that. He 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 wants the Drawn and Quarter to be an actual and he wants it to be a fun contest, but he, he, he wants it to be a serious contest so that the pros have a chance to show their work. Um, you know, they sell their drawings on, on uh, you know, a couple days later on, on uh, Friday night auctions. And uh, so for them, it's very serious in a sense that they, they want to do their best work. And when, when the viewers sort of mass vote someone who pretty obviously didn't deserve to win, and it's the fan winner from the previous week of the fan edition, they don't like that. So don't do that. Don't just all go in there and, and vote for Cross Comics simply because you think it's funny. If you're going to vote for him, vote for him because you think he deserves to win. Okay? That, that's the one thing. And that's what, what, uh, that's what Joshua was talking about, uh, Mike yelling at Chester about, because that happened before with, uh, I think it was Booster. Booster won the, 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 the fan edition a week prior as, as a joke and and then he went to the pro edition the following Wednesday and then everyone voted for Booster again as a joke because you know, it, it was kind of funny but it ticked Mike off because um, I think Booster either won or he came in second place and a lot of pros who, who des obviously deserved to win over, over Booster um, you know they, they were left out um, and um, and yeah, it's not it's not good. And, and again, it's not good to, to sort of annoy Mike because Mike does a lot for, you know, does a lot for, for the for the fan edition and stuff. Or, or he, he inspired it. I mean, basically, I mean, we're basically doing a fan edition of his of his sort of competition. So it's it's good to just you know just show him you know a, you know at least enough respect to um to treat the vote seriously and uh, just vote for the person you think is best. You know. Fan edition winner or not, so that's, I guess that's it. Um, let's see. Um, Lady Celtic Moon says, "Can I say something about tonight?" Sure, go ahead, say something if you like. Um, Charlie McNeilson says, "I voted for you too." Thank you very much, Charlie. I appreciate it. Um, Bullet says, "That's sad, Jiminy. I hate it for you." Don't worry about it, um, Bullet, because I I, I do the um, fan edition, and if I if I win, I do the pro edition. It, for me, it's it's a good chance for me to, to compete against other artists, and because I, I I don't get that much opportunity to actually compete against other artists, um, especially on a time limit. Um, so for me, it's fun. It's it's like um, it's like being back in school uh, when I when you know when I was in art school, and uh, it was the best because you you were measuring yourself up against other artists, and they were measuring themselves up against you, and it was. It just forced you to become a better artist. So I got what I wanted out of uh, tonight's drawn and quartered. I got to see other see other artists draw, and uh, I got to compete against them on a with a time limit, and that just helped me to improve my skills and just become a better and hopefully faster artist. So don't worry about it. It's cool. Um, Eagle forty three says, uh, "Mike versus Chester, <laughs> the universe versus the bear." <laughs> yeah, 
That would be quite a quite a contest. I, I would have to change Mike's name to the Wolverine in that case because Mike's Mike's a little shorter than Chester. Um, Chester is, I think he's huge. He's like six foot four or something. Chester Busby, he's a big guy, and Mike's Mike's not quite that big. Um, he's like five seven, I believe. So um, it would be definitely be a Wolverine versus Sabretooth type thing, type competition, type fight. You know how those fights win when Wolverine goes up against Sabretooth. Yeah, Wolverine usually wins, so you don't want to mess with Mike. Um, Felix Haas says, look at that skunk girl. That is awesome. Thank you very much, Felix Haas. I appreciate it. Um, Evan Voss says, I don't vote. Um, Ethereal Dragon says, hey, Joshua. Um, ah, Vilna says, Shipman Spider America was really good yesterday. Yeah, I thought that was very funny. I thought it was very cool. I liked his take on uh, Spider-Man. As a patriotic hero, um, so Gary Shipman does lot so many cool things. I really like watching him on Drawn and Quarter. He's he's very silly sometimes, um, and it's, it it can be frustrating. Um, but um, despite that, I mean, I mean Gary Shipman is a solid solid artist. I mean he is good, and uh, and and I kind of enjoy his dad humor because he he is. He, he he has a very he has a very cool sense of humor. Um, very not stoic, but he has a very dry sense of dry sense of humor, and I, I and I appreciate that. He, he's good at uh, he's good at pricking the uh, some of the pros who are kind, who can be kind of obnoxious sometimes, and I and I, I like that. Um, Bullet says I think it was Ryan Cardinal. Ryan Cardinal? Um, Evan Ross Scrabble says, Dillard cheated. <laughs> How'd he cheat? Because he, he drew a big butt? Is that, was that cheating for, for, uh, for John Dillard yesterday? Um, Joshua Hughes says, uh, he might have when people maybe cheated to get the fan champ to win. Okay. Hmm. Um, Scott Schmier says, Manny appreciates Rick, and I can't blame him. Rick has done a lot for Manny, and Rick has progressed a long way. Um, Scott Schmier says, and Rick is a very good guy, and popularity helps in this game. Um, Bullis says the sock accounts. Okay. Oh, you mean when, uh, I guess one of the earlier, I guess, uh, pro editions, maybe? I don't know. Um, Lady Celtic Moon says, when the stream went down, I saw the voting was still going on, so I had taken a screenshot at 10 timer. I saw the lead was you, Jiminy. And when I looked at the pick after I pasted it, it, Rick up on it. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, I, I mean, I, I, sus I suspect I know what, what, what happened. I won't say, but, um, you know, again, I, I do it for fun. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna complain about it. If, it, um, I'll, I'll let it stand. <laughs> Let's play, let, let me put it that way. I, I, I won't, I won't raise a fuss about it, but I, I but I, I have a suspicion of how a lot of times on the fan edition, um, there is questionable voting, and I and I I know how it happens. Um, I don't necessarily like how it happens, but um, and I and because I run the poll on the pro edition, I I I sort of do things to make sure it doesn't happen on the pro edition, or at least it's harder to do it. Um, but, um, I guess Booster is not setting up those sort of protections on the fan edition poll, so it's a lot easier for, uh, shenanigans to occur, so, let's, let's just say that. Um, Bullet says, I get that merit is important, but I think they take it too seriously, and I vote based on merit quality. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I, I can, I understand your point, um, Bullet, it's, um, I think because they're they're pros and they're and they're and they're very competitive by nature in a sense they take it more seriously. But I think also um, they they do see it as a competition where the best artist should win, um, and they don't they don't see it as as a joke. 
and that, I think that's where seriousness comes in. That they're very serious about their art, so they take they take competitions and voting on their art very seriously. So if someone like Booster wins, they they take that they take it personally, and um, I, and maybe they shouldn't because it's sort of an obvious joke. But at the same time, I can see why they would take it personally. They 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 don't like it. What they they don't like it. So. Yeah, it's it's better it's better if on the pro edition you guys don't do it. None of us do it. Just uh, just vote for the best artist you see, and if, if that happens to be the the fan fan winner, vote for them. Vote for them. Tell people to vote for them. If you like the fan artist best, their art. If you like their art best, vote for them. Um, but I, I I just don't. I wouldn't screw around that much um, on the pro edition. Um, because again, that, that that stuff, Chester is the one who ends up getting chewed out because of it. Um, he 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 gets the brunt of of the pros' rage because of our goofing around. So it's, it's, it doesn't affect us; it affects Chester. And if Chester's not happy. We're not going to be happy because you know we're going to hear about it from him. So it's better just to nip it in the bud and just not do it. Um. E yeah, Eagle Forty Three says Booster got second. Yeah, yeah. Um, Scott Schmier says Diller went on to win this week for, from his fan edition win. Yes, yes, he tied with John Malin, um, who uh, yeah, they both came in first. I think they both got like twenty three votes or something. It's very close, um, and the whole time it was like sort of neck and neck between Dillard and uh, and Malin. So it was a good, it was a good competition last night. And uh, Dillard did, did a really good job. I mean, great art. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Eagle Forty Three says John won with a bondage drawing. Yeah, it was. Um, it was. Uh, yeah, it was basically um, a female um, Lone Star tied up. So, um, Eagle Forty Three says they do take it too seriously. Um, your ethereal dragon says, draw a drone with a Rice Krispies treat, and that is why she is smiling. <laughs> oh, man. Rice Krispies. Evan Von Scriber says, eh, how is that different than always voting for Bob's and Malin? Yeah, but I don't, yeah, well, you know, again, it's, um, yeah, Ma Malin gets his, uh, Malin Militia. To uh, to back him, and uh, yeah, um, you know, again, vote for the people people you think deserve to win. Um, I'm I'm not a big person on uh, I'm not really big on uh, backing based on popularity. So, uh, sorry, I am. Let me just uh, give me a second. I just want to. I think I'm talking more than I'm <laughs> actually drawing. I just want to want to get some some drawing done. Just a little, just just a touch. So I really need to practice my my inking. I want to watch more uh, more inking videos on. Uh, on YouTube because I, I've I've seen some really really cool stuff especially um if you, I don't know if you guys have ever looked at like uh, inking videos from uh, manga artists but I, I find I learn a lot and they're usually just silent I mean these guys aren't talking if they're talking they're talking speaking in Japanese anyway so I don't understand them but um just watching these guys ink um I find very instruct instructive for me. Um, let's see. Um, Eagle Forty Three says they always draw women. Why couldn't they draw Doc Savage or, Sav or the Shadow yesterday? I agree, uh, Eagle Forty. I like you. I am a big Doc Savage and Shadow fan. Um, I wish they would draw. Doc they would have Doc Savage and the Shadow characters every week on Drawn and Quartered. One week they can is like this week we're drawing Monk. Uh, this week we're gonna draw Reddy, and everyone just draw their version of that character. I would love that. But, um, yeah, so far, no luck. One day, one day, 
One day it'll be Doc Savage month. Or maybe, no, you need more than a month. You need like a month and a half because there are six of them. No, you, nah, give, them a, give, it, give it two months. Because they're at least, they're probably about eight characters. You got, you got Doc, you got Rennie, you got Monk, you got Ham, you got Long Tom, you got Johnny, you got Pat. Who else is there? Yeah, I guess you can throw in. You can throw in Chemistry and uh, Habeas Corpus too. That, that'll fill up to about two months. Uh, let's see. Everyone subscriber says hashtag double standards. Um, yeah, Lady Lady Celtic Moon is confirming Chester Busby's huge height of six foot four. Um, Bullet says yeah, do anything close to completed piece of art is not my strong point. Um, yeah, it just, it just takes time for me. It takes a lot a lot of time. Um, let's see. Uh, I think there was one time says uh, Joshua Hughes. Um, that where it looked like people were cheating on the vote for the fan winner, but that's and that's what Mike didn't like. Yeah, no, I agree. And I, and when I again when I did the do the poll, I, I set it up so that cheating is much harder or at least more frustrating for people to do, so they sort of less inclined to do it. So um, and it's worked so far. Um, uh, Bullet says I'm more about planning and doing multiple thumbnails. Yeah, no, that's I that's important. I think. Ah, Gary made Rice Krispies treat on live stream because of Pope Fire. Pope Fire is very, very uh, persuasive. She'll nag you until you do something she wants you to do. So, <sighs> sorry, I had to get a drink. Ah. Uh, uh. I'm in on Shipman. Yeah, Shipman's cool. I love him. Um, let's see. <laughs> Emma Scar says, Gary's joke delivery is phenomenal. Uh, let's see. I am way behind. Oh my gosh, I'm way behind. All right, let me let me just zip lightly through these really quick. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, cool, cool. Scott Schmier. Okay. Does the closed caption... Does not work? I don't know what that means. Charlie McNeilson says, yes, Shadow will be dope. Well, I don't know what... What is with... What the heck? I think you guys are... Alright. You guys are doing, I guess, music or uh, song lyrics. So... I'm not missing anything, I don't think. Um, Eagle 43 says, I want to see Hawkeye and Cliff Marsland get drawn. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 from uh, The Shadow, yeah. I'm not even sure. I would have to reread The Shadow to figure out, to find out what Hawkeye and, and Marsland are supposed to look like. Um, I may have a good handle on, uh, on his main, uh, a fairly good handle. On his main uh, sort of uh, agents, but yeah, Marsland and Hawkeye are a little more obscure. Uh, talk more to keep Jiminy busy. Yeah, thanks. Uh, on the mango ink does not work. I don't know what that means. All right. All right. Now. Let me continue with the coloring. Uh, Spider-Man Homecoming. Great flick, maybe? You haven't seen it yet? It came out last year. Are you talking about Far From Home? The new one? Or, um... Oh, okay. Oh, it's Emma Scriber. Okay. Uh-huh. He's trying to... Trying to get me to talk about the new movie, um, I guess. I haven't seen it, Evan. You know I'm not going to, so. Evan's trying to start trouble. 
Oh, you're taking off, Evan? Oh, man. Okay, you take care. And Joshua Hughes is going to bed as well. Hey, Joshua, thanks for hanging out. I really appreciate it. Thanks for all your help. Um, Evan Von Scriber, thank you very much for, uh, for chatting and everything. Appreciate it. Um, take care. Yeah, Ethereal Dragon says, uh, Gary Shipman gave Far From Home, home two thumbs up. Weaponized Nerve Rage gave it a 7.5. I don't know. I'm not, I did not like Homecoming at all. And I, I'm not going to see Far From Home just because it seems to have almost all the elements that I didn't like about Homecoming. So, I mean, I'll, I'll check out Far From Home when it comes out on video and then I'll, I'll find it somewhere. I'm not going to pay money for it because, you know, for me, Homecoming was not worth paying money for. And one thing I hated most about it was that, you know, he lets everyone know his identity. It's just, I, I don't, ah, I'm not going to, I'm not, not going to go on another rant, but it's just, uh, it annoyed the heck out of me. Along with his you know, robotic suit that talked to him and, yeah. Yeah. You get me triggered thinking about the MCU Spider-Man. MCU Spider-Man is good in, in his cameo roles, but in terms of his uh, carrying his own film, so far he hasn't done it. He doesn't do it in this movie because he has uh, Nick Fury on there, you know, sort of uh, telling him what to do and stuff, and he didn't do it in Homecoming. When uh, Marvel makes a Spider-Man movie where he is the... Uh, He's not a sidekick and doing other people's uh, bidding and taking orders from other people. Yeah, maybe maybe then it'll be it'll be worth uh, worth paying money for me to see. But until then, not nope, not yet. Um, <laughs> Evan says, "Admit it, Jimmy, this is the best Spider-Man has ever been." Yeah, no, wrong. Um, Combo Bob says, I give it a 7. He's more the Spider-Man we want the last third of the movie. Okay, well, that's, that's cool. Uh, I, be, I would have been more happy if he was the Spider-Man we want uh, in the in the last third of uh, the, the first movie. I shouldn't have to wait, you know, you know, a film and a half to actually see Spider-Man. It shouldn't take that long. By the end of the first movie he's in, he should be Spider-Man, or at least 90% Spider-Man. And he wasn't in in, uh, in that first MCU movie. Um, yeah, yeah, Bullet says uh, Spider Man wants to be gay now. Yeah, the, Tom Holland's an idiot. He should keep his mouth shut. Don't say stupid stuff like that. Um, I mean, you say that stuff when, when when you're no longer the character, when someone else is taking over the role. But while you're in the role of Spider Man, don't say idiotic stuff to virtue signal. You know, show how woke you are. Um, things that have nothing to do with the character and don't incorporate, um, you know, sort of divisive nonsense like that when you're talking about a character you're playing. Um, it's just, just, it's just dumb. Um, Combo Boss says, Far From Home was pretty good, not perfect, but decent. Okay, cool. Um, ma, 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 ma. hey, Evan Moss Carver, you have a good night. You take care. Um, Theodore Dragon says, MCU Spider-Man is not funny. Yeah, um, uh, that's uh, yeah, that's another thing. He's not. Uh, I don't know. He's not. Uh, he's not the jokey Spider-Man that I I really want to see. The best Spider-Man, the best live-action Spider-Man in the movies, and this is this is the character Spider-Man. I'm not, I'm not talking about Peter Parker. I'm just talking about Spider-Man in his costume. The best one we've seen was Andrew Garfield in Amazing Spider-Man Two. Um, the story itself was a mess, but Spider-Man, the, the way he portrayed Spider-Man in the costume was dead on from the comic books. The jokes, the, the, the sort of the way he taunted uh, villains to throw them off, the way he acted, um, his costume, straight out of the comics. He looked exactly like Spider-Man. If you can get that Spider-Man... His behavior, his costume, and you put that in the MCU and gave him a movie, that would be Spider-Man. Um, the best Peter Parker I've seen so far is, is still uh, to Tobey Maguire. Um, uh, 
the the MCU Spider Man is not is not Spider Man to me. Um, he doesn't make his own stuff. All the stuff comes from Tony Stark. Um, so they they pretty much tossed his him being a genius out the window because now he's not the smartest guy in school. He's just one of several different geniuses in school. Um, you know, including you know his girlfriend and uh, and and the school bully, or at least his bully, who's not even a bully anymore. He's just like a, another nerd. Uh, I don't know. The MCU Spider Man annoys the heck out of me because it's it's so far afield from who Spider Man is in the comic books. Um, let's see. Uh, Spider Man just needs a dance sequence. Says Eagle Forty Three. Yeah, <laughs> he does. Yeah, he, I guess maybe. Yeah, maybe. Um, Charlie McNeil says I liked it more when Spider Man made his own suits. Exactly. If if, if Spider Man is not making his own suits, it's not Spider Man. I mean, he need it. There, he, he's a poor guy who cobbles together his own suits. You know, he he doesn't have high tech suits that talk to him and tell him, you know, what to do in a fight. Um. Yeah, but, 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 uh, let's see. Uh, Ethereal Dragon says there are about ten gay characters already in Marvel comics. Yeah, then put them in the movies. Don't change characters that are that are not already you know, gay, and make them gay for some stupid reason. And yes, I'm including Iceman. Iceman is not gay. Um, he was just brainwashed by Jean Grey. Uh, da, 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 da. Yes, Hale, goth Peter Parker. <laughs> Venom is goth. Um, Compo Bob says there's actually a legal clause created by Stan Lee that says they can't make drastic changes to Spider-Man so he'll never be gay. Yeah, I, yeah I, I'm not worried about them actually doing that. I just don't like I don't like it when uh, when the actors um, of these characters, I mean they, they, they're they hired to play a part. I don't like it when they start screwing with uh, screwing with the responsibility they've been given in uh, sort of carrying these roles and uh, and uh, use that as a as an opportunity to, uh, to say dumb stuff on behalf of that character. You know do it on your own time. Don't do it while you're promoting the character. Now, let's see. I'm gonna do this. Do this with a pen because I'm not. says the guy who did his voice in the recent Spider-Man multiverse animated movie I guess said would be an interesting choice oh uh, 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 would be an interesting choice for an older Peter okay I don't know what he, I don't know what he looks like so I don't know if he would be good to play Peter Parker as an older Peter Parker I don't know um Tony McNeilson says in the MCU Spider-Man they should have started him out as an older Peter Parker um, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I want to see Spider-Man, hmm. how can I put this, we've seen Spider-Man in high school for three different versions now, I agree, right, it's time we had a mature Spider-Man, one in his 20s, who is not doing dumb stuff with, uh, in high school and whatever. Um, so, 
If they could do that, I'd be all for it. Uh, Lee Cutter Moon says you're done. Oh, um, well, I'm not. I'm not done yet. I'm still working on it. Um, this guy, Jake Johnson. Okay. Um, I'll have to look at him later. Let me shed some light on this so I can see what I'm doing. Now the fun part, erasing, so I can see what it is I missed and what it is I need to do. One thing I've learned over the probably the last few years with drawing women is that fewer lines is better. <laughs> because for a long time I was drawing whenever I would draw women they look like men with uh, with lipstick on and, uh, and big eyelashes. And I still sort of, I still struggle with that, but um, I found that if I draw less lines like on her arms and legs and this even this is, I mean, it's, it's, it's quite a number of, quite a number of lines, but it, it helps, it helps soften them, so. Uh, yeah, I'm still learning how to draw women. <laughs> They're hard to draw because they gotta look pretty. They gotta look pretty. And I need to finish drawing her hand. Um, Lady Celtic Moon says I have to head to, off to bed later, guys. Hey, Lady Celtic Moon, you have a good night. Thank you very much for all your help tonight. And uh, guys, um, yeah, if you haven't already, please, uh, please give this video a thumbs up, like, and share it, and uh, and please subscribe to my my YouTube channel. Um, the Ethereal Dragon says Stormy needs more love in the movies. She does definitely. And uh, they need to actually portray her properly. Storm isn't a murderer. And the latest uh, version of Storm in the X-Men movies, I mean, she's a straight-up killer. Um, and then, this is after, I mean, this is before she, she joined the X-Men. And even knowing that, she, she, that she's a murderer who tried to uh, kill half the planet, um, you know, they asked her to join the X-Men. Yeah, no. I don't buy it. Um... Huh. Eagle 43 says, make a Nicolas Cage Spider-Man movie. The, the, the noir Spider-Man. Spider-Noir. That'd be cool. I think that'd be interesting. Yeah, that'd be cool. I would be for that. I would be all for that. One. Okay, that one's dark. All right, I think I I'm gonna, I'm gonna play it by ear. See if it works. I always have trouble uh, try, sort of guesstimating how best to do shadows on clothes, on costumes, especially when the costumes are very dark. I mean, with the with hers, it's very fairly easy. I just 
blank the whole thing in. But like her hands, I want to I want to show that I want to show the individual fingers on her hand, and I'm just uh, trying to figure out which part to have in shadow, which part to show, and I'm. Um, mm, uh, mm. Gonna, I'm just gonna dive in. Hope this is. Hope this turns out right. Get my glasses and let me get another pen so I have more control. Dragon says, Storm is a mother bear of the X-Men and a moral compass. Yes, she is. So when you portray her as a psychopath and a killer who does not care about other people's lives, you are not portraying Storm properly. So, yeah, they gotta, they gotta work on that. I think that's okay. There we go. That's that's pretty good. That's pretty that's pretty good. Shadows look okay. All right. So it's a little thing is that make me nervous when I'm drawing. And shadows on clothing is one of it. One of them. Yeah. That is that. Sorry about that. I knew something happened because uh, everything froze up on my camera. I was like, what's going on? Um, yeah, sorry about that, Charlie. It was hiccuping. Um, apparently, uh, my, uh, my phone spontaneously decided to jump over to another Wi-Fi. And, uh, and so I lost, uh, lost connection with my actual Wi-Fi. And the weaker Wi-Fi just pooped out so apologize for that and I see we lost half the people so <laughs> oh well uh, it's getting it's getting like kind of late anyway um, but let me uh, keep working on this and I really appreciate you guys hanging out hanging out with me and staying up it's greatly appreciated thank you for getting Bored. Ah, 
Bullet says, yeah, almost 4 a.m. here. Uh, where are you, Bullet? It's almost 4 a.m. Where, where you are? Huh. Because I am... Um, let's see, what time is it? Yeah, it's only... It's, uh, 2.45 where I am. So... I'm on the East Coast. You're on the East Coast too? So it should, it should, it's almost it's almost three. It's not almost four. This is the East Coast of uh of the U.S. Unless my clock is really off. What time is it? Let's see. Yeah, it's uh, it's two forty-five here. Let's see. Let's see. All right, that's the right pen. I just make sure I don't mess this up. Don't mess it up. Don't mess it up. Don't mess it up. Sorry, I'm letting my my uh, fear of screwing up. <laughs> Your clock is two minutes slow. Sorry about that. Um, time zones, daylight savings. Ah, uh, let's see. Ethereum Drag says this. These live streams are, are distracting me from exercising. <laughs> East Coast too. East Coast. Ah, uh, good dog press says aloha all. Who is this gorgeous woman that you're drawing? This is a. Uh, this is a crazy character created by some crazy guy named uh, Manny Korea. So, uh, yeah. So I'm trying to finish her up right now. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is Good Dog Press in the chat, the creator of Skunk Girl. Thank you very much for showing up, Manny. Um, and thank you for creating Skunk Girl, this very cool character that I'm trying very hard not to mess up. <laughs> Ah, don't mess up. Come on, man. All right. That's all right. I'll, I'll leave it. <laughs> I'll leave it there um, for fear of messing her up. Um, let me see. Death of Gwen Stacy says bullet. I'm not sure what that means. Oh, oh, okay, you're referring to Eagle 43. Eagle 43 says, Jake Johnson might be a good older Spider-Man. What type of story do you think would be good for him? Oh, okay, cool. Um, good dog press says, you are amazing, Jiminy. Oh, thanks. But you created her, so you are mo amazing. I'm just drawing her. I'm just drawing what you created, so... Ah, uh, Pablo Romero Arts here. Hey, Pablo Romero. Good seeing you. He says, great work, Jimmy. Thank you very much. And Pope Fire is here. Awesome. Now it's a party. When Pope Fire shows up, you know it's a party. All right. Got her hand. Got her tail. She has a very lovely tail, too. Um, now, what I have to do is the background that I was planning, but didn't even get a chance to get started on. During Drawn and Quartered, that's okay. I'll put it in now. I will put it in now. Actually, 
actually, let me let me do a little more of her hair shadows here. Rice Krispie Treat talk starts. <laughs> Hope Bar shows up and everyone starts talking about Rice Krispie Treats. many things and among those things is she is a patriot she may be a bad girl but she loves America because she knows America is the greatest country on earth because that's where all the that's where all the that's where all the money is that's where all the best stuff to steal is so She's going to stick around America as long as she can and support it. God bless America. Everybody, if you haven't uh, already subscribed to my channel, please do. Um, I do live streams a few times, not eh, more than a few times a week, eh, at least a few times a week, um, sometimes more. And uh, yeah, give the video a thumbs up, this live stream, and hit the bell for notifications of uh, future videos when I when I post them or when I do other live streams. Like, like I said earlier, my my live streams are. There's no real schedule for them. Sometimes I do them early in the morning, like like now. Sometimes I do them in the afternoon. Sometimes I do them in the early evening. So uh, make sure that if you subscribe, and hopefully you will, to my channel, that you hit the bell for notifications and check your settings. Make sure the notifications have are set for all videos. Um, uh, because I think that uh, YouTube has been sort of fiddling with, uh, with uh, people's settings and... Uh, People have not been getting all the notifications they should be for the video. So just uh, just make sure that you hit the bell for notifications and then uh, check your settings to make sure that all your all your notifications are going to be given out when uh, when videos drop. There we go. Skunk girl, all American girl. The you know, other thing is for at the altar. The other thing for at the altar is Jacob as Flash, Pope Fire as Iris, hey, Jimmy as Mr. Traffic. Mr. Traffic? Who's Mr. Traffic? Mr. Traffic? Hope you don't mean Mr. Terrific, because that guy's an idiot. At least on the on uh, the uh, what is it CW the Arrowverse that Mr. Terrific on Arrow is the one character that every episode 
I would hope, I hope, I would actively hope would get shot in the head because he was so dumb. He, he, he I, I couldn't understand what his purpose was other than the, to be the, uh, the, um, the team idiot because he was, he was a clown. Let's see. Um, all right. Now I gotta think about the. Hold on a second. I'll be right back. I'll be right back. I gotta, I gotta check something. I have to Google something. Oops. There we go. Now you can see her. Yeah, I had to check how many stripes were above and below the flag. I'm oh, sorry, above and below the the, the um the sort of star um square on the flag. I wasn't sure. Um, let's see, still working? Okay, still working. I think is it? Yeah, still working. All right. Let's see, one, two, three, four. Okay, five, six. Okay, so that's, so that's six. One, two, three. Right. I saw you like the hot rod I drew Manny. Yes. Let's see. Um, one. Two, three, oh, oh. two, three, four, five, five, six. Theodore Jack says terrific, but like the comic. Yeah, Mr. Terrific in the comic is cool. Um, and I was really, really mad with how they <laughs> they destroyed him on TV. One, they made him gay, which is completely contrary to his character since he became Mr. Terrific um, to, um, d uh, due to the death of his wife. Um, and two, they made him an idiot. Um, I mean, it, 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 it was like they... It, they were trying. They were purposely trying to, to destroy this really cool black character any way they could. It's like let's feminize him, and then let's make him a complete moron when he's actually the leader of um, usually whatever team he's on, um, and he's the smartest guy in the room. But let's let's just destroy him and make him make him a complete moron and a joke. So uh, yeah, I was not happy with Mister Terrific um, with uh, with the version on, of him they they put on a on a CW. Let's 
see. Four. One, two, three, four. Five. Six. I am not getting this right. That should be easy. Should be easy, Dag Nabbit. See, um, Scotch Mary says I put a little skunk in the grill instead of the Mustang's <laughs> Mustang emblem. Oh, in your car, cool. Um, do, good dog press, uh, Scott Schmier. Your skunky was awesome. You will be on the fan edition very soon. Yeah, seriously, Scott. You, um, I I would really encourage you to uh to sign up for fan edition. Um, because it's uh one is fun. And two, I mean, you, you, you do good work, so. Um, three, four. Okay, this is better. This is better. Much better. Um, Scott Schmier says, maybe. Okay, cool. Hey, man, take your time. Seriously. It's not going away anytime soon, so whenever you're ready. It'll be here waiting. So, um, yeah. I, I encourage all, all ours to, to at least try the fan edition at least once. Um, yeah, if nothing else, it's just, uh, I don't know. I, I, I find a lot of times I draw better on a fan edition than I do when I have, when I take my own sweet time, um, like this. I don't know if I would do as, as well if I was just, uh, you know, sort of drawing her on my own. Because I, I, I'd be, um, you know, second guessing everything I, I do. Um, on the fan edition, you don't really have time. You, you kind of just have to, you have to just get it out and uh, make decisions fast or fairly fast. So, in that in that in that sense, it, it it's, I find it very helpful. Fan edition and and pro edition. You know, if you if you get on it, same thing. Um. Oh. Okay. Um. All right. That's why. Scott Schmidt says, I think I do better when I'm in a rush. Yeah, I find that, I mean, like, every, every, whether it's for competitions like drawing a quarter or just deadlines for jobs, when I am under a certain amount of pressure, um, it's usually time pressure, um, to get something done, I, I do better. Or if I, maybe I, maybe maybe it's not even so much I do better as I I stop futzing around, I stop contemplating my navel, and I'm I'm more focused. And because I'm more focused, I'm able to do better work and make better decisions due to that focus. Maybe that makes more sense. Maybe, or maybe not. <laughs> I don't know. All right. Drawing comics is so much different than painting. Yes, it is. It is, Scott. It's quite a bit different. Um, now, I'm not a good painter. Um, but um, drawing comics, I mean, people always compare it to, uh, to directing. Or like filmmaking, and it is in a sense because you have to you have to be able to visualize angles, scenes, perspective, and a whole bunch of different things, um, and then uh, be able to uh, transfer that into a drawing that that readers will be able to understand and and interpret what's going on on the page. So it's uh, it's tough. This is, this is. It's not easy. Well, 
Uh, Scotch Mary says, I'm learning to find a middle ground. Cool. That's good. Hey, um, what's his name, dude? Uh, Alex, Alex Ross. Um, you know, he, he draws comic books, or rather paints them. Um, and he's a, he's a, he is a painter by training. And he found a middle ground to, uh, to paint and create comics. So, you can do it. Ugh. All right. Scotch says, I'm learning. Um, uh, I'm liking watercolors and pencil. Yeah, that's yeah, a good, uh, good combo. Oops. Uh-oh, lost chat. Let's see. Oh, there it is. Alright. Let's see. Shad Nielsen says, heading to bed. Good night and job on the skunk. Thank you very much, uh, Charlie. Thanks for, thanks for watching. And thanks for, uh, you know, hanging out with me tonight. Hang out with all of us. Um, get some rest. You have a great night. Sleep well. I'll talk to you later. Um, Scotch Ray says, I'm no Jim O'Reilly, but I'm watching him. Who's Jim O'Reilly, Scott? Is that a, is that a, Artist, a painter. I'm not a comic book artist. I don't, I don't know him. I'm not familiar with him. All right. And yes, in. Bitter and bold defiance of Nike and Colin Kaepernick's stupid comments on their shoe. <coughs> I'm making this a Betsy Ross flag because Betsy Ross flags are awesome. I remember the first time I saw or really became enamored with the Betsy Ross flag was. Quite a while ago, it was the bicentennial of the country, 1976. And I was a kid at the time. I was, I was a kid. <laughs> but even to, to this day, I just remember how happy everyone was. Everyone had a had a had a Betsy Ross bicentennial um, flag. Little ones, big ones, waving them, and we went to the parade. Um. Oh, Jim O'Reilly has been. In, oh, he's he's a, another fan artist, and he, and he was in the pro edition. Okay, cool. I probably I probably have heard of him. I just don't remember his name, um, just because it's hard for me to remember names a lot of times. Um, but 
when I was a kid, we went, we went when we went to the um, the Fourth of July parade in '76. It was so cool. Everyone, everyone had these had these Betsy Ross flags, and it was just like it, it was. I don't know. It, it was one of my favorite childhood memories. He sent you. Oh, he sent you an original thing, like Ben Grimm thing, a drawing. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> Manny says, "I'm a lucky man. I get to finally eat dinner by watching awesome art of my girl." <laughs> oh, cool. I'm glad you enjoy it, Manny. Yeah, no, seriously, really, really cool character. Look at his Psylocke on Facebook, it's phenomenal. And his Nightcrawler, okay. Jim, o Jim O'Reilly, okay, I'm going to have to remember that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Okay, right number of stars. Because there were thirteen colonies originally in the U.S. of A. And so, there are thirteen stars on the Betsy Ross flag. Just like there are 13 stripes on the modern flag and the Betsy Ross flag. I'm missing 37 stars. <laughs> yeah, now this is this is the uh, this is the classic Betsy Ross flag. Um, so uh, only has uh, only has 13 stars on it. It's kind of scary when a Betsy Ross flag is seen as a sign of rebellion against uh, political correctness. Um, but uh, you know, Skunk Girl's a rebel. She has, she she doesn't uh, she doesn't really care about political correctness. She she does what she she does she does what she thinks is best. She goes her own way. It's actually looking pretty good. Thanks, Manny. All the brainy guys in the Arrowverse got soy boyed. Um, what, other, what other brainy guys were there? And uh, oh, there was um, what's his face? Um, Cisco, um, who Cisco, who surprisingly looks just like Mike Miller. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, he, they, they yeah they. Uh, I don't know why they made him into. Okay, look, I like Cisco on on Flash. I mean, he's a big improvement over the combo character vibe. Um, but they made him into a wuss, and I, I don't understand why. Um, I mean, he doesn't have to be a tough guy, but, I mean, don't make him an idiot. I don't, I don't quite understand why they do that. Uh, not so much vibe. Adam, oh yeah, oh my gosh, they ruined Adam. Oh my gosh, terrible. He's an idiot. Another character who, who is largely comic relief and an idiot. Um, and it's, I don't want to blame Brandon Roth, who plays him, you know, he plays Superman and Superman Returns, but, um, the Adam is not a, is not a, is not a moron, he's not a fool, he's not a dope, and, and I, it's, it, he's one of the reasons why I stopped watching Legends of Tomorrow, I mean, there are a number of reasons, I mean, it, it was one of the worst shows on the CW, but, um, them making the Adam into, into a, 
into a goofy dope did not did not help or encourage me to watch it. Uh, yeah, Major Steel, Captain Steel, he's another idiot. Yeah, another. He, he's supposed to be a scientist, but he's like an idiot. Yeah, ugh. I, I don't know what the... It's like the CW puts all of its efforts, all their efforts, at least recently, into making, uh, into building up their female characters while making all their male characters, um... Effeminate dopes. I guess that's the only way I can put it. You know, they're clowns. Or most of them are, anyway. A large number of them. I haven't, I haven't done an exact count, but too many of them are. All right. That looks pretty, pretty, pretty okay. It's ah, uh, let's see. It's just steel. I don't like the way they portray or elongated man. I don't either. But with elongated man, I can I can deal with it because elongated man is kind of a is kind of a comic relief character, and he always has been. I mean, he's always been kind of a goofy character. I mean, I I'm just hoping they bring in his wife soon or at some point um i guess her name's sue dibney um i don't want them to kill her like they did in the comic books but i, I would like them to bring her in because in the comics elongated man is she is half of elongated man i mean he they're sort of a team in the comics i mean they're, they're i guess they're, they're called the nick and nora um Nick and Nora Charles of, of DC Comics, where they're both detectives and they solve cases together. So without her, he's sort of like, he's not, he's not the full elongated man. So I am, I'm hoping they bring her into the show and they get married and then end the flash. <laughs> they can just end it. <laughs> uh, Scott Schmier says, oh wait, hold on. Let's see. Gary Green sucks. Who's Gary Green? I don't know who that is. Is that the guy who plays Major Steel, um, Ethereal Dragon? Um, Stashmir says it's a soap opera, like 90210 with superheroes. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's all a big letdown to me. They did better work making the hero series in the 80s. Yeah, I kind of, I kind of agree. I do not disagree. Mm. I, mean, I, I enjoy seeing all these characters brought into live action to a certain extent, but at the same time, what they've done with these characters in live action has been <sighs> disappointing, discouraging, um, annoying, uh, and some levels disgusting to me. Um, but, um, I don't know. What can you do? I just turn a channel or I don't watch them anymore. So... I think out of all of them, the only ones I, I still watch are Arrow and The Flash. Every, all the other ones I dropped. I dropped pretty fast after after the first season. Supergirl, watched the first season on CBS. Brought to the CW. Within four episodes, it was gone. I dropped it like a bad habit. They, they destroyed that show. And I wasn't really that big of a fan to begin with. But it was they, they completely ruined it. And it's just gotten worse as as time has gone on. So uh cartoons on the other hand are great. Yeah, yeah. DC's uh, animation or, or animated shows and and movies are fantastic. Top of the line. I wish their movies I I, I wish their live action movies and their live action TV shows were as good as their cartoons. If they were it would be must see TV, must see TV. Um, uh, Ralph is only second to Batman as a detective, possibly. I I I know he's up there. I know there are a bunch of characters that are really really great detectives in the DC universe. I don't remember the, the exact hierarchy though. 
I know Elongated Man's up there. I know this guy named Jason something or other that Batman has hired to do detect detective work for him when he's out busting heads is up there. So it's, um, yeah. But yeah, Elongated Man's up there. Uh, Injustice was fantastic. Yes, the, the, the comic book series was, yes. Uh, Legends, Legends of Tomorrow, original character even worse than the other guys. Gary Green, okay, I, I guess, okay, again, I, I stopped watching Legends of Tomorrow because it was, it was, it, it was too, I couldn't watch it, it was, it was too terrible for me to watch, like Supergirl, it got to a point where I was just like, this is garbage, I can't watch it anymore, it's, it's not even worth, I'm not even spending money on it, it's not even worth an hour of my time, that's how bad it was, um, Scott Schmier says, I love the Avenger cartoon series, the Avengers, um, I mean, mightiest world, mightiest, mightiest team, or America's mightiest, or something or other, mightiest, first mightiest heroes. Is that what you're talking about? Um, what do you think of Doom Patrol? I've only seen parts of Doom Patrol, and I wanted to watch it. I heard that they made Negative Man gay, and I was. I was like, nope, I'm out, I'm done. That that was enough. Just just hearing that that, that they 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 you can't you can't call it race swap, you can't call it sex swapping. What do you call it? Orientation swapped. Um, one of the main characters on the show. That that was enough to tell me I'm not gonna watch it. It's, um, I if they're if they they can't get the characters right from the get go, I don't want to watch it. And I'm I have that attitude for for a lot for. A, a lot of shows when they do stuff like that it, pandering nonsense as that is totally changes the character or fundamentally changes the character like that but they lose me so i i've only seen clips of it, it the clips i've seen have been okay i haven't seen a full episode so i can't really judge it um yeah bah, 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 bah. um in, okay, Arrow only has ten episodes left for Crisis. Yeah, there's only ten episodes left when the new season starts. I think it's I think it might only be eight um, when a new season of uh, of Arrow starts. It's only going to be a limited number. It's not going to be a full season, and then it's going to end permanently, season finale. So um, yeah, one second, right back. Alright, um, some of the uh, fan film live action stuff is better than the big box office. The Wolverine series on YouTube is crazy good. I haven't seen the Wolverine series on YouTube, so I'd have to check it out. I mean, I've seen uh, some of the sort of versus um, things from, uh, what was it, Batman's, Batman in the Sun or something, or Bat, Bat, Bats in the Sun or something, um, where they have superheroes fighting each other. Those are really good. Um, Legend of Tomorrow was bad. They killed the only good character in the first season. The only good character in the first season? Who was that? Who, who died in the first season of Legend of Tomorrow? I can't remember. Eagle 43. I cannot remember. All right, now time for the flag. Oh, glory! Let's see if I can do this without screwing this up. Now, my one. All right, I think I know what to do. I think I know. My main concern is uh, line weight, which I need to be mindful of mindful of when I draw. After years, I finally learned that line width, you know, thicker lines on the outline of characters, you know, thinner lines on the in, on the interior of characters is important, you know, to give the character weight and heft. Um, but the problem for me has always been separating the foreground character from the background character. And so I just want to make sure that I use a lighter line weight on the background 
which is, I mean, it's, just, it's like a symbolic background, obviously, um, from the foreground. So she gets pushed to the, to the fore, and uh, the flag, in a sense, fades back. So I'm trying to use a thin enough pen line to do that, and I'm hoping that I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to screw it up. <laughs> I'm hoping. We'll see. First, gotta there we go. Get the ink flowing. That that would be a help. Ah, uh, the one with Wolverine versus Predator is awesome. Oh yeah. Okay. I, you, so you're talking about the Bat in the Sun series um where the superheroes fight or not super not just superheroes but fictional characters fight each other like batman versus wolverine wolverine versus predator um you know uh, the green ranger versus who did he fight he fought he fought like one of the guys from uh what was it double dragon or um ryu he fought ryu from uh what, what was that video game um uh, can't remember. It wasn't Double Dragon. It was the other one, the other fighting game. Not, not uh, not Mortal Kombat. The other one. <laughs> yeah, those are pretty good. I like them. I like them a lot, actually. I love the Wolverine versus Wonder Woman. That was a really, really good one. And again, I gotta figure out if the best way to do this. I think. Come on. Light, stay light, stay. Street Fighter, thank you very much, Ethereal Dragon. Yeah, Street Fighter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Eagle Forty Three says Wolverine versus Predator. Um, yeah, Eagle Forty Three. There are a number of live action fan films, and they're actually they're professional. Professional quality, actually, not when I say fan film. I mean, they're they are made by fans, but they're professional quality or pretty close to it. And they and they're um they're matchups between fictional characters. One of them is Wolverine versus Predator. They have Wolverine versus Batman. They have uh, Batman versus Deadpool. Wolverine versus Wonder Woman. They have a whole slew of them, and they're produced by this uh this uh these group of guys called Bat in the Sun. If you type in Bat in the Sun on YouTube and look for them, you will find all their videos. And uh, they, you know, they've made short films um, with, uh, with various characters, Batman characters. Um, and actually, the guy they have playing Batman is probably the best ver live-action version of Batman I've seen. I mean, he, 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 he looks and sounds like a live-action version of the uh, Batman animated series uh, character. That's how good he is. You should check it out. Uh, and a really good one you should check out is uh, Batman vs. Darth Vader. <laughs> that one's crazy. Really good. Really, really, really good. So, uh, Bat, Bat in the Sun. Check it out.
Hey, that animated one. Yeah. I said, how are you? I'm doing fine. And I checked your channel today, and you were freaking tied with me in terms of subs. I was like, this kid is killing me. You, I mean, your 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 channel is blowing up like crazy. I was, I really have a lot of admiration for what you've done with your channel. It's great stuff. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm doing well. You have a good Fourth uh, of July. Actually, I don't even know, I don't even know if you're in the states. Are you in the states? You might. I, th I think you might even be. Um, you might be in Europe. Are you? Are you in England? I don't, I don't know where you are. So, <laughs> so uh, if you're if you're in England, then uh, Happy America kicked your butt day. I guess. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was mean. That wasn't very nice of me. But uh, hope hope you hope you're having a great uh, Fourth of July. Oh, you're in the UK. Okay. Well, yeah. Happy, 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 happy Thursday. <laughs> yeah, if you guys don't know that animated one, he is, I think you, I think you said you're 16. He's a 16 year old YouTuber who does animated memes. And he just started this past April, I believe. And, uh, he already has well over 300 subs. Uh, check out his check out his channel if you have a chance. Um, pretty funny stuff. The videos are short. I mean, I mean they're they're memes, so they're short. But um, you know, they're they're definitely he's he's he's, very, he's talented. I mean, if in I, I I can't wait to see his stuff in say two years because he's gonna just in terms of the stuff he's gonna be learning. With animation and stuff, he's gonna be, he's gonna he's gonna be even better than he is now. So, Eagle Forty Three says, uh, "Happy America kicked your butt day." <laughs> uh, I've subscribed to him. Oh, cool, good, good. Um, Eagle Forty Three says good videos regarding that animated one. Yeah, he, he does. He he's, he has some really good videos. Like I said, they're, they're, they're funny memes. Um, that animated one says, that's a really awesome drawing. Well, thank you very much. This is actually a character that we started, that started tonight for a drawing competition called Drawn and Quartered, where um, a bunch of artists get together and uh, a subject or a character is picked, and we have two hours to draw them. Um, tonight, was uh, the character was Skunk Girl. It's a new comic book character created by Manny uh, Korea. Um, and, uh, I'm not sure if Manny's still in the chat or not. He may be. But, um, the link to his comic book is in the description of this, of this live stream. So, if you want, check it out. Um, they're on sale. The comic book is on sale right now. He's, um, it went on sale this past Tuesday. Um, but it was a fun, it was fun drawing her. It was my first time drawing Skunk Girl. And, uh, just a, I don't know. I just, I don't know. I like, I like the character. It's sort of a throwback to the bad girls of in comics from the 1990s um it's a little little before your time uh that animated one but um the um the bad girl craze in comics was really big back in the 90s where you know sort of uh you know 
buxom, um, sort of bad girls um, with superpowers would uh, have their own comics and uh, were very popular. So this is a t this is a throwback to that. Oh, Manny's still here! Yay, Manny, that animated one, that animated one, Manny Korea, the creator of Skunk Girl, this character right here. So. Ah. <laughs> yeah, Manny's in Hawaii, that animated one. So he's still celebrating the Fourth of July, I believe. Ah, okay. Oh, you scared me for a second. I forgot that. Yeah, yeah I, I, that animated one says it's five July eight a.m. for me. I read that as as it's five in the morning July eighth a.m. for me. Sorry, I, I forgot that it, that that in Europe you put the they put the the date before the month when you write it out. So it's July 5th, 8 a.m. for you. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're, um, is it 8 a.m.? Or is it 7.40 a.m.? So you're, like, you're, like, five hours ahead? Four hours. Yeah, you're four hours ahead. Four hours ahead of us on the East Coast of, uh, of the U.S. So that anime one, what, you're you're still in high school. What are you doing this summer? Are you just hanging out, or I don't know if you guys go to camp or what in the summer?
Ah, 8.41, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you're, you're uh, five hours ahead then. Ah, okay, you're five hours ahead. It's 8.41. Oops. Make sure that doesn't... Ah. Uh, oh, wow. And you're 16, you're finished school, and you're looking for colleges? Holy mackerel. Dang. Wow. Uh, my cousin's son is a Cub Scout, says Ethereal Dragon. Oh, that's cool. So, uh, that animated one, What do you want to go into animation? Is that what you're interested in? I mean, since you're doing it on YouTube, I mean, obviously you, you have some interest in it. So. But I, I, didn't know if, I, don't, I didn't know if that's what you wanted to do for a career or go to college for. Ah, there's no mod. Let anarchy reign. Wah ha ha ha. Says Ethereal Dragon. I don't know. There might be mods here. They're just they're just they're just, they're just, they're just laying in wait, waiting for someone to get out of line so they can pounce. So, um, that animated one says, uh, yeah, there's no courses close to where I live that are full animation. So I'm looking into courses that have it in parts, but. Also has like film, graphic design, and game design in the same course. Ah, neat, 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 neat. So, um, okay, some, I, I, I mean, I don't know much. I've been, I've, I've been to England once. Um, if you say, when you say the UK, I'm assuming you mean England. Um, so, um, I don't know what, what area you, you live in. I'm, I'm guessing not near London because I would guess London would have places with uh with animation courses and stuff um is there any way you can take uh those cor like courses online um because especially nowadays i would think that there would be plenty of animated courses that you, animation courses that you can you could get a degree by taking online courses in animation but i have, i haven't looked into it so i don't know Um, the animated one says nope. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm hoping that you find a good course at some point because, uh, like I said, I mean, I think you you have a, you obviously have an interest and you you seem to have talent. So, oh yeah, it costs like four four k. Yeah, that's always a problem. Um, the court, the the cost of uh, of secondary education. So, yeah. Well, do, do what do what you can um, to learn as much stuff as you can online for free. I mean, YouTube is a great source of info for um, whatever uh, software you might be using, and also just in general, just to find out what 
find out from pros in the business um, what you might need to know and uh, what programs you, you will have to learn uh, in order to to do well once you graduate. So, um, the animated one says, I have no money. Yeah, um, well, I guess a, <laughs> I guess one potential source of income is, is your YouTube channel. Um, once you get it up to a thousand subs and above, you'll be able to monetize, monetize your videos and, uh, and then at least make a little money from that. Um, you, you would have to get a lot more subs in order to actually make a, a, you know, a fairly decent income from it. But, uh, yeah, like I said, at the rate you're going, you're doing really well. I mean, I, I started my YouTube channel uh, last September. So it's been, was it 10 months? 10 months ago I started it. And you have, yeah, I think you have more subs than me in only three, in only three, uh, three months. So at that rate, you're going to blow up. Um, and if you haven't already, check uh, social, socialblade.com, um, that animated one. And it gives you projections on how fast your channel will grow based on how well it's done to this point. Um, it's, uh, I'll, put, uh, I'll actually put it in the, oops, this is, all right, there we go, like that. There, like that, like that, and then, uh, Move that there, uh, like that, and then bump, 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 and then put it there, like that, and then back, and then enter. If you go, um, let's see. Um, the anime one says I gave three thirteen. You have three sixteen. Woo! I'm still in the lead until until like five minutes from now when uh, that animated one like passes me by like a rocket um because uh, i think last week that animated one had 272 subs and in a week he's caught up to me so um yeah you you're you're doing very well um and your channel is growing so in a year in a year you'll easily have over a thousand subs and uh and then you can start monetizing your videos take uh take tips um, during your live streams, because um, I've seen you live stream live, even though even though you don't talk, um, you know, people can still you know do super chats so that you can answer questions while you're while you're working and they pay you money. So it's uh, pretty cool. Um, the animated one says it's not accurate. It said at one point I'll get eight hundred thousand subs by five years. That might be accurate at the rate you're growing. I don't know um, because they, they they base it on your growth exponentially. Um, they're, they're they're probably thinking if you've reached uh, 300 subs in three months, then it will grow exponentially from that point on. So that in a you know you'll you'll probably get to a thousand. Well, at that rate, I mean you'll get to a thousand within within nine months. You know, in less than a year, you'll have over a thousand subs. And the more subs you have, the more people spread the word, the more people know about it, and your your growth just increases that much faster. So, um, yeah. So I, I wouldn't I wouldn't say that it's not accurate. It, it's, it's I think it's within the realm realm of possibility. Um, I mean, I think it said that I'll get I'll get eight hundred thousand subs. Um, probably in about five centuries at the rate I'm growing. So <laughs> you will very likely get there well before I do. So
<sighs> the anime one says, to be honest, looking at how good your art is, I thought you would at least have a thousand subs. It, it Yeah, it's, I don't know what the formula is to gain subs. Um, I, I, I've seen people who have great art, great art, and have very few subs. I've seen people with crummy art who have tons of subs. I don't know what it is, what formula it is that gains people subs. And I, I suppose if I did know, I would have a lot more subs. Um, the only thing, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I think part of it is uh, popularity, maybe. Uh, people who, for some reason, do something that goes viral, they end up with a lot of subs. Um, and uh, Whereas other people, unless they... Um, or, or sometimes it's something as simple as... Not, it's not really simple, but something as basic as it's just charisma. Like on-screen charisma and presence is a big factor in, in whether or not people sub to your channel and sub to it quickly. Um, I, yeah, I, I don't I don't... I don't know if I Um, I mean, like your channel. You don't really talk on your channel. You just have content. Um, you, you, have, you have your art. Um, somehow people found out about your channel. They like what they saw. And from that, your channel has been growing ever since. Um, I, I, maybe, maybe the right audience hasn't seen my channel. I don't know. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I, don't, I, wish I, I wish I knew why uh, some channels do really well, others don't. But, uh, you know, you should be happy that your channel is doing as well as it is. Um, because it's, uh, I found, I find it hard to get more people to, to, to look at my stuff who don't, are, who aren't already aware, of, who aren't already aware of it. Um, so I, I, <laughs> I find myself sort of being repetitive throughout my, my live streams, my videos, like, you know, encouraging people to subscribe, to, uh, to share the video with, with, uh, with Twitter and other, you know, other social media, because, um, for me, that's one of the few ways I have to, uh, to let other people know about my channel, um, to just sort of repeat the same thing over, over and over again, you know, sub to my channel, you know, hit the like button, give the video a thumbs up, um, hit the bell for notifications and just say that, you know, three or four or five, ten times during a live stream and hope that everyone does it, or at least, you know, most people do it. Um, I mean, if you can grow without having to do that stuff, more power to you. I mean, that's awesome. Also, another good way is to uh, go on other channels um, um, and, uh, and let their audience know who you are, um, that you exist. Um, you know, I, 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 like I said, I was on Drawn and Quartered earlier today, um, um, drawing this character for the competition, and that alone um, got people to, to see my artwork, see what I do, and then um, I think I got three subs from that as a result. Um, and plus, plus I, you know, I posted my my uh, my YouTube my YouTube channel in, in the uh, in the chat a few times, um, and then I was on Manny's um, channel after that for a few minutes. So going on other channels, letting their audience know that you exist, and um, and then giving them an opportunity to uh, to find out what your channel is and what you do is also I found a, a pretty good way to uh, to increase your audience. So um, let's see. Uh, Ethereal Dragon says Shabby also has good art. Okay. The, you, in your list of people to, to subscribe to. Got it. Um, the animated one says, I'm not that good at drawing. I just try to do cartoony, then realistic. Okay, that's cool. Uh, the, and he, and he says, one of my mates got a video that went viral. Oh, wow. That And got 170,000 views on it. Man, that's awesome. I think the most views one of my videos has gotten is 100 and, 120, maybe. 
115. So not that many. <laughs> None of my stuff has gone viral yet. <laughs> one day, who knows? Maybe it'll be this one. It's like, man, you see that drawing of Skunk Girl? Yeah, wow, that's awesome. It'll be on the evening news, and then and then um, and then they'll be asking me to be on a, on the Today Show, and uh, yeah, I'll be famous at that point, and I'll have like 20 million views for this live stream by the end of the month. It'll be awesome. And then when when it goes viral, everyone will see your name, that animated one, and they'll say, who's that animated one? He sounds like a cool guy. Hey, he's from Wales. Hey, let's check him out. And then your channel will grow like crazy, and then you'll have a million subs by the end of the, by the, end of the year, and then, and then you'll be rich, and then you'll forget all about us. Yeah, that's probably how it's going to end up. Um, <laughs> the animated one smiles at the prospect of becoming a wealthy YouTube millionaire. It's like, ha, 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 yes. Yes, ah, 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 soon. Um, let's see, that anime one says, a lot of people find me because of Discord. Discord? Um, how do you, well, I, I know about Discord, but how do you use that to promote your channel? Um, that anime one says, you should do collabs. Okay, cool, let's do a collaboration. Um, let's see. Eagle43 says, what about putting up videos on other platforms like BitChute? That's probably good too. I'm not familiar with BitChute, so, um, yeah. I think that's, that, that's also a, a big, that's, I think that's also a big, um, factor, um, sort of connecting with other forms of social media, like, I, I mean, I, I always, I always see, um, Elliot Fernandez, who, um, who's a great artist, ph phenomenal artist, but he has a relatively small YouTube sub subscriber number, um, I haven't looked at it recently, but it's, it's not that big, um, but on, on, on the other hand, if you look at his Instagram following, his his Instagram following is enormous. It's like a he has like a hundred and fifty thousand um, followers on Instagram, and I don't understand why that why he hasn't been able to translate that into tens of thousands of YouTube subscribers. I mean, I would think that one one posting of his on um, on Instagram to his 150,000 follower um, list, telling them to go to YouTube and sub, it, sub to his channel would guarantee him easily over 1,000 subs, easily. 1% of his, of, his, of his Instagram followers would, would be over 1,000 people, 1,000 new subs. I, I don't understand why he hasn't done that. Um, Ethereum Dragon says, your Twitter bio does not have a link to your YouTube channel. Are you talking to me? Um, Ethereum Dragon? If, okay, if it doesn't, if it doesn't, then, then it should. I, I, I've got to do that then. Thank you. That is a mistake on my part. Um, I definitely should do that. And everyone should do that. I mean, I, the same thing with, I was just saying about Elliot Fernandez. Um, I mean, maybe he just didn't, hasn't thought of it or, or um, it's just sort of slipped his mind, um, like apparently my Twitter thing has with me, I didn't even, probably, I guess I didn't even think about that, so, um, let's see, um, <laughs> Eagle 43 says, maybe posting it with hashtag furries on social media will make it go viral, I don't know if it'll make it go viral, but it'll probably get a lot more attention, um, and she is, kind of, she is a furry, so, um, interesting, it makes me question, uh, Manny's interests, hmm, Manny's, Manny's, Manny's a furry. Interesting. Um, that animated one says, I don't know a lot about, a lot on drawing, but the animation community is so big and nice, and there's lots of Discord servers filled with animators. I have one with about 65 people in it. Wow, that's great. Fantastic. Hmm, very cool. Yeah, his Instagram is huge, says Eagle43. Hmm, cool. 
Yeah, yeah, his, uh, Elliot Fernandez's Instagram is huge. All right, now. All right, I think I'm just going to leave it like this because I was going to color in the, um, the star field, the background of the star field black. But, whoops, I'm going to drop my pencil. Um, but if I do that, it's going to clash with her arm, the black arm there, and it's going to, it's going to get, the arm's going to get lost. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to fill that in black. I'm just going to leave it like that, sort of open, open color, open air, whatever, open. So that she pops out of the front. Like so. Not erase all the pencil lines. So. A lot of artists drawing furries lately. Um, is it lately, or I know that? Well, I don't know. I think I think it's mainly due to money. There are a lot of a lot of furries out there, furry furry aficionados out there who are into that sort of thing. So I think artists are just happy to take their money. Which is fine. Um, I mean, I have, nothing, I have nothing against furries per se. It's just uh, I'm not into drawing sexual type stuff. So I would, I, I, I prefer my work to be stuff that's stuff that I don't have to explain to my mom. That that's my standard. If I have to explain to my mom what I'm drawing, and she's questioning, it's like, what, what is that? Then uh, I don't want to have to do that. So <laughs> I steer clear of any of that stuff. Stuff that makes my mom call me up on the phone and say, "What the heck were you thinking when you drew that?" I don't, I don't, he paid me. says that's a good standard yeah if you don't want your mom to see it you probably shouldn't draw it <laughs> that's my standard anyway um yeah plus i'm a christian so i mean there, there's a lot of stuff that i, I will not draw so um, but i'm happy to draw a lot of stuff um but uh you know just uh sort of sort of play it by ear you know so far there have been very few things that i've, I've, I've had to say no i can't i can't really draw that for you so so that's good. Okay. Cool. That's that's it. That's a uh, that's skunk girl. All American bad girl. God bless America. God bless America. I just have to sign it. And I'll sign it down here. Dragon says nice. Manny Carole, Korea says awesome. Cool. Glad you like it, Manny. There you go. Hope I did her justice. Yeah. Okay, everybody. 
That is Skunk Girl. If you haven't already, please check out Manny's um, Manny's com comic book. It's on Indiegogo right now. The link is in the description of this video. And uh, yeah, just uh, give it a look. And if you like what you see, buy it. Buy it. Tell your friends. Let them know that Skunk Girl is available on Indiegogo. So, um, anyway, it is now 4 a.m. where I am, so I have to go to bed. I'm getting tired. Uh, but Manny, thank you very much for allowing all of us to draw your character tonight. It was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. And, uh, yeah, I am really looking forward to, uh, to, to seeing how your campaign goes. I'm really looking forward to receiving the comic book when, when, it, when, when it's done and when it's printed. And, uh, yeah, I, can, I see really exciting things in store for you in the uh, coming months, possibly years with the character. So, uh, yeah, keep it up, man. Keep it up. Um, you guys, have a great night. Um, if you haven't already, again, please subscribe to me. Please uh, give this video a thumbs up. Um, hit the bell for notifications of future videos. I'll be doing more stuff in the future. Not sure when. Eh, probably tomorrow. Possibly not. Who knows? So hit the bell for notifications. And uh, next time I do a live stream or uh, post a video, it'll pop up and you will be notified. Okay? You guys take care. Be good. Bye.